Yeah, we're gonna get, oh, here we go. Recording is in progress. We're gonna get started in about 30 seconds. And if you just got something pop up on your screen, just hit got it. But in the meantime, I just want to get people, give them an extra 30 seconds to come in the room. If you haven't already done so, find that chat box. Tell me where you're going in from and what is your favorite holiday? What is your favorite holiday? Mine is Christmas. Oops. All right. Well, it's just at 12 o'clock, so let's get the Christmas party started. Let's get started. Hello and welcome everyone from the Fairfax Library. Thank you so much to the Fairfax Library for having me here today. And welcome to Tina's Joyful Kitchen. This month we are extra, extra joyful because this is my favorite holiday season of the year. It's Christmas time, yay, life is wonderful. So before I get started, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. Go ahead and take your, um, you turn your cameras off so we get a nice crisp recording and put your, keep yourselves on mute. Also, if the internet goes out, don't you worry, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Every time I say it, nothing happens. Also, anything that I say in, during this presentation is not to be considered medical advice because I'm not a doctor or a nurse. If you have questions, call a doctor or a nurse. Okay, what else do we have to talk about? All right, let me introduce myself. Let me introduce my, my name is Tina McDermott and this is Tina's Joyful Kitchen. I'm lazy, inspirational chef. I'm a speaker, I'm a weight loss coach. I've been doing this for 21 years. It makes me so excited every time I say that. And this is so my love, this is my passion, and there's truly no place that I'd rather be than right here, right now in my kitchen, teaching you how you can find joy in the kitchen, even if you don't know how to cook, even if you don't like to cook. So why? So you can live a life that's full of health, vibrancy, and freedom, free from diets, free from disease, just to live life full of joy. If you want joy in your life, type joy in the chat. Type joy in the chat if you want joy in your life. If you want joy in the chat, if you haven't already figured this out, this is a very interactive cooking class. And that's the beauty of this is that I want you to be a part of this class today. Yes, joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Good. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about is that when we multitask, we literally experience less joy. Oh my gosh. And life is about joy. So I'm going to ask a favor. I have my cell phone here. I'm going to ask you to grab your phone and put it on silent. I also put mine on do not disturb so that you're not distracted this whole time and that you can be present and you can experience joy with me today. Turn Close out of all your browsers and be with me 100%. So if you're in to be with me 100%, type I'm in in the chat. If you are in to be with me 100%, type I'm in in the chat. Go ahead, find that chat box, type I'm in in the chat box, I'm in. Now, good, good. Now, normally what I do is I check and see how many people are here and I need at least half I'm ins. At least half of you have to be I'm in, otherwise, who am I talking to? But, right, 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 okay, good. Let me tell you what we're gonna make today. <clears throat> Let me tell you what we're gonna make. We're gonna make, by the way, there's extra points for people who come pro pronounce this one prosciutto wrapped green bean bundles, or if you're like me, string bean bundles, prosciutto wrapped string bean bundles, right? And then we're going to make this beautiful butternut squash casserole. So instead of the sweet potato casserole with all the sugar, we're going to do it with light. It's going to be a very light dish. This is a very heavy dish. Okay. Butternut squash casserole with pecan crunch. Oh, good. We got more. I'm in. Good. And then we're going to make this very low sugar cheesecake with a cranberry topping, cranberry topping. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. If you're excited to be here and you're in to be with me 100%, put excited in the chat, put excited in the chat. The first thing that we're going to do, because I always start with the dessert in mind, you take a look at all of what you're what you're making and what needs to happen first. And what ha needs to happen is my cheesecake topping needs to be made. And I'm going to make it with fresh cranberries. Fresh cranberries, I typically buy a whole bunch and freeze them when I was um, cooking for my cooking show, my TV show in October. I couldn't find cranberries anywhere because I ran out of them in my freezer. And uh, thank goodness a friend of mine keeps them in her freezer. I had them, but I had to throw everything out in my freezer. Um, I'm just going to cut. 
So stock up on them. This year I have stocked up again. So I just wanted to cut open a cranberry and I wanna show you how beautiful a cranberry is on the inside. I think it's gorgeous. And cranberries are very, very good for your heart. Think red fruit, red, good for the heart. It's also good to help fight free radicals. What I did is I washed all of my cranberries and I sorted through them. Sometimes you always get a, a mushy one that you wanna toss out, otherwise it will ruin your whole dish. So you don't wanna ruin your whole dish. So we're gonna just put whole cranberries, don't bother cutting them. I only cut the one just to entertain you a little bit and cause they're so pretty. Now for my sweetener, you could use a little bit of maple syrup, okay? You could use a little bit of maple syrup, but instead, I am going to use something that's very low, if no sugar, something called monk fruit. Has anyone ever heard of monk fruit before? Put monk fruit in the chat if you have heard of monk fruit. If you've heard of monk fruit, put monk in the chat if you have heard of monk fruit. Yeah, monk fruit is literally a fruit that's very, that's sweet. And it does, when we eat it, it does not raise our uh, blood glucose levels. So it's safe for diabetics and it's not chemicals. It's not made in a factory. And that's what you want to avoid anything that's made in a, um, in a laboratory, I meant to say, in a laboratory, okay? So we're gonna do a little bit of our confectioners. I like to use confectioners. You could use the granulated monk fruit in this because it's heat and that will dissolve it. But I like confectioners for most everything that I cook and I bake. Next, we're going to get an orange and I'm going to get the zest of the orange because the zest is almost like uh, the extract of orange. Orange extract, you're gonna get the oils from the lemon if you're gonna, or the orange I meant to say, because we're gonna do a lemon as well. Don't do the white stuff, the pith. I mean, it, if, you, if you do, it's fine, but it doesn't have any flavor. The, it's actual orange part that you wanna get your zester. Now you can skip this step if you want, but I want my cranberry topping for my cheesecake to be full of flavor and, and a complimentary flavor to the cranberries. Complimentary flavors to cranberries are orange and lemon, in my opinion. But if you have any other complimentary flavors, by all means, let me know. So it's almost the whole orange and I'm gonna zest a little bit of the lemon. Don't remember if I put lemon zest in the recipe, but you know, remember I said I'm lazy and I'm inspirational. Use what, what inspires you. If you don't like orange, use more lemon. If you don't like lemon, use more orange. Perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. And again, this is going to give it a wonderful, wonderful flavor, all of that zest. Now, because I love flavor, I'm actually going to use a little bit of orange extract, just a little bit. I think that's a quarter teaspoon. It might've been a half, it's a half a teaspoon, that's fine. I'm also gonna use a little bit of lemon extract because I just want that, I really want that, I love lemony flavor. Now, in the, if you want, you could, instead of the monk fruit, if, you, if you're okay with a little bit of sugar, you could use a little bit of um, maple syrup instead of the monk fruit. Okay, but if you're not gonna use maple syrup and maybe you want a little bit of that maple flavor in your topping, I have what else but maple extract. And that's the maple extract without the sugar, without the sugar, isn't that lovely? Now, instead of the water that I know that in my recipe, I did say to do a half a cup of water. I thought this through again and I'm like, you know, let's not do water, let's do the juice of an orange. So instead of water, we're gonna do the juice of an orange and the juice of a lemon. This was not my juicing orange. This was a cara cara orange that are delightful to eat. They're super sweet. Who here loves the cara cara oranges? Put cara cara in the chat if you love. Saucer water comes, comes in cranberry lime. Oh, okay, yeah. Was that you who told me that before, Mary? Okay, somebody was telling me about a seltzer water that is sweetened with monk fruit. And I thought that was interesting because I have not seen it. I even looked for it. Okay, we're gonna do a lemon as well. Did you know that lemons disinfect your intestines? They disinfect your body. And they're also wonderful for cleaning your sink, okay? So every once in a while, I'll throw a lemon rind into my sink and I'll rub it all the way around and I'll put it right through what my friend calls the garburator, the garbage disposal. She's from Canada, she calls it a garburator. 
I think it's a lovely term, garburator. Who knows what I'm doing with all my other vegetable and fruit snacks? I mean, um, scraps. Who knows what I'm doing with them? Where am I putting them? Anybody know where I'm putting them? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Compost, Going, giving it back to Mother Earth. I'm gonna give it right back to Mother Earth. We're gonna put this on the heat. Caitlin, give me a four minute timer, please, dear. And we'll just store this every four minutes or so. This back burner does not like to light. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that's a silicone spatula. I like the silicone spatulas because they don't get hot and they're much easier to do. Okay. Next. Yes. A lot of dessert in mind right now. By the way, I almost forgot. If you wanted a real super thick uh, glaze for the top of your cheesecake, you're welcome to put in a teaspoon or up to a tablespoon of some chia seeds. The chia seeds will add some protein. I'm not going to do it in this one. I just wanted to show it to you, but it'll also make the, make it more gelatinous, make it a little more thicker gelatinous. You can use that. Okay. Let's put that aside. Let's get to the next step of what needs to happen next for our meal. And we're going to start with the cheesecake crust because it needs to cool before you put the filling in there. So we're gonna get that going right now. Let me turn the oven on, 350 for about mm, 15, 20 minutes, but I am using a convection oven and the convection heats faster. So I'm gonna lower the temperature by 25 minutes, 25 degrees, and I'm going to lower the time by a few minutes as well. I'm gonna lower the time by a few minutes. Okay, it says 20 minutes, but I'm gonna do it for 12 and I'll check it in 12 minutes. Now let's make the crust. And what I have here is some, hold on a second. Got all my spatulas here. Let's leave that one there. Let's get another one. I have a ton of these silicone spatulas, melted butter. Now I am making a half of recipe. I'm making a half a recipe because the full recipe, it's a lot of cheesecake. And the bottom line is you only need a little sliver. You only need a little sliver. You, there's no reason anyone needs to be eating a gigantic piece of cheesecake, okay? You're going to get wonderful flavor, wonderful texture, just mm, appreciate it in your mouth as you're eating it versus having to eat a huge piece of it because it's heavy, it is. But I'm also gonna make it super low sugar so you're not gonna get the spike in glucose and you're gonna get some nutrition out of it. Not a, not a tremendous amount, but you don't need to eat a lot. So I'm gonna make a little one. Now, I almost forgot to do something before I do the crust. Here is my pan. What do we call this pan when, when the bottom pulls away? I don't remember now, it's driving me crazy. Um, somebody help me out. What's the name of this pan? My, ah, my Lyme disease is, I've got Lyme brain. Anyhow, when you buy this, it comes with 50 of these parchment paper rounds. Do not forget to use it because if you do not want, even this is non-stick, you do not want this to stick. Springform pan, thank you. You're my new best friend, Yefe. You're my new best friend. Don't forget to put this down, okay? Because you want, you don't want to ruin your crust. So we're going to put that down. And then we're going to close our spring form plan. Yes, I know that word. And I'm also going to spray this because I, want, I don't want my cheesecake to stick on the sides. I'm not gonna use a propellant spray. I'm gonna use a non-propellant because you don't want those chemicals in your body. Um, and I'm also gonna use either grapeseed or avocado oil for this. I have an olive oil spray, but I don't want my cheesecake to taste like olives. Do you want your cheesecake to taste like olives? I don't. Mm. Yeah, the grapeseed oil is benign. I use it a lot in baking. So our pan is ready. Let's go back to the crust. We've got some melted butter. And to that, I'm gluten-free, okay? Who here is gluten-free? Put glu GF in the chat if you are gluten-free. Put GF in the chat if you are gluten-free. I'm gluten-free because, uh, again, I had Lyme and it messed a lot with my entire, every single organ system in my body. I'm free of it, yay! Um, and it takes diligence to make sure that I keep up with it, okay? That I keep up with my body and make sure. Now I'm basically just dealing with the residual damage that happened. So I put a little bit of sea salt in there. We got almond flour. So I bake with almond flour, coconut flour, tapioca flour, things that are uh, non 
oh, that are gluten free as well as grain free. Grains tend to disrupt my system as well. Next, we're gonna do a little bit more of our sugar substitute. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of what? Monk fruit, yep. Quarter cup of some more monk fruit. I put some salt, butter, almond flour, that's it. And that's all we need. And stir your, stir your cranberries as oh, well. Oh, and to stir my cranberries with my little jingle jangle apron. Who loves my apron? Who loves my apron? My, it's, it's so tacky. My mom made it and I have to wear it at least once a year, at least once a year. And it's got little jingle bells on it. I love it. I love it. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. Give me another four minute timer on that. Okay. Let's get our crust going. I'm just going to mix the sugar with the butter and the almond flour. A little pinch, like a quarter teaspoon of some sea salt. Okay. All right. Love the apron. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I feel a little silly. I was going to wear a hat, but then I fear I was going to get super hot in this kitchen if I wore the hat too. And uh, yeah, you don't want to see me glisten. I'm not going to say the sweat word. Glisten. You don't want to see me glistening. Okay, here we go. What I should have done, and I forgot, I even took out my little strainer there. I should have sifted through the monk fruit because it tends to get a little clumpy dumpy, but whatever. I'm just going to break it all up with my with my spatula, break it all up with a spatula. And so I wanna to talk to you about using your hands when you're cooking. Who uses their hands a lot? I mean, of course utensils, but we're gonna, cause I'm gonna stop using this utensil and I'm gonna use my hands in just a minute. Put hands in the chat. If you get your hands in the mix, get your hands dirty and get your hands in the food when you're making the food put hands in the chat if you like to put your hands in the food there's something it first of all i find it's easier because we have god-given tools and those are our hands and our fingers and sometimes it's just easier see how it's all mixed through and i'm just going to make the crust right now or just pack it in there with my hands you could get the back of a glass to do this but it's going to be so much more difficult than if you just get your beautiful little hands and get in there and press it down with your hands, okay? Now, there's something magical also about using your hands. And it, it gives the essence, and that might sound corny, but it gives the essence of you and your love into the food, okay? It gets your love into the food. I was once, I'll tell this story, two stories. First one, earlier in my marriage, I was a little frustrated with my husband. And I remember making him dinner and it was the worst dinner ever. It was, it tasted terrible because I was not in a good mood. I did not bring joy to my food. And I think that's the key to Italian cooking is the love that you put in it. Because if you love, then you're going to use fresh ingredients. You're going to use, you know, the more closer to mother nature that food is, the better it is. And that's what you're going to use, but you're also going to get your hands in the mix. Okay. Uh, I, the second story I was going to tell you is that I have a friend who just adopted a dog a year old and she's very, very, very nervous and she likes to bark at her partner and she just wants to bark and bite him. And I said, you know what? Have Chris feed her, have Chris feed her and get his, get, have the dog eat right out of his hands. And then the dog will understand that he's a friendly number one number two she'll get the essence of him so here we go it's not perfect but it's beautiful because i did it with my fingers okay now i'm going to put this in the oven now because it's the again it's convection i'm going to put a piece of parchment over it so it doesn't get a burned topping okay so it's just a piece of parchment paper you don't have to do that in the regular oven but I recommend it so that you don't get burn on the top. I'm just gonna wash my hands. Why? Because life is messy, wash your hands. Okay, all right. So that's in the oven and it's gonna be in there for about 12 minutes and we'll check it. This way, by the time we do the filling, it'll be nice and cooled down, nice and cooled down. Next, what I want to do is I'm going to put the oven on at 425 and we're going to make our, Caitlin, I'm stirring my cranberry. So reset the timer for another five minutes, please. Okay. 425, did I hit start? There we go. Make sure there's nothing in the oven. Who here stores 
stuff in the oven. I always store my stoneware in the oven and yeah, it's not gonna hurt anything, but it'll be really hot to take it out. Okay, next we're going to make our prosciutto wrapped green beans. Prosciutto wrapped green beans. Now, there are extra points for anyone who can pronounce prosciutto with the rolling of the R's. If you think that you can pronounce prosciutto with the rolling of the R's, take yourself off of mute right now and let me hear it. Let me hear prosciutto, prosciutto. Prosciutto. <gasps> that was gorgeous. Anybody else? All right, 100 points to that person who said prosciutto. All right, you did it beautifully. Now we're going to make green bean bundles wrapped in prosciutto. And I have my oven at 425. We want high heat for this one. We want to get nice high heat so we get nice crispy. And I, I, I like these as appetizers, okay? I like these as appetizers or you can serve them for dinner. I, of course, I've sorted through my green beans. Now, look, I grew up calling them string beans. Who calls them green beans and who calls them string beans? Who calls them green beans? Who calls them string beans? Um, I like to get the French ones because they're thinner. You can use the regular green beans that are a little fatter for this, but I like the thinner ones for this. Also, when I get the thinner ones, I, I, I don't know, the variety I get from Aldi's doesn't seem to have a lot of yuck in them, they, like things that you have to cut off with a knife. They're, they're beautiful. There's nothing I need to trim. And those little pieces on the end, they're edible. Don't worry about having to trim them. And it makes the dish look really pretty. So try getting the French green beans for this one, okay? French, <laughs> I got one person who calls them string beans. Okay, next we're going to get, so I've got that ready. I've got my olive oil ready, my sea salt and pepper. That's what's missing, okay. We'll put some freshly ground black pepper. I don't want to have to wash my hands thoroughly after touching meat because I always wash my hands a couple of times in very hot water. So I'm just going to use rubber gloves. So much easier, so much easier. So I've got some prosciutto and I, I buy this from Aldi's. You can buy it. I don't know where you get your prosciutto or even if you eat prosciutto, but and it's very, very thinly sliced and it is a cured meat. It's cured in salt. And if anybody wants to know how it is processed, I can talk you through the whole processing because my grandfather in Italy always raised hogs and had always made prosciutto. There was always one or two legs of prosciutto hanging in his wine cellar, hanging in his wine cellar. And I was brought up on this stuff. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And it takes a whole year to cure it too, a whole year. So if you wanna know the process, you let me know. Otherwise, I am just gonna go about my business and laying out these beautiful pieces of prosciutto. This is the toughest piece. And this is a good kitchen hack. I hate the word hack, but it's a good kitchen tip is that use some rubber gloves. So you don't wanna to have to wash your hands all the time, get some rubber gloves, okay? But remember, if you touch meat and you touch anything else, you're gonna to have to wash it. Okay, so we're gonna get maybe about 10. Oh, you wanna know the, 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 the process for curing prosciutto. I can absolutely tell you all about it. So what you do is you get the raw leg of the hog and you literally have to squeeze through any blood. Some people hang it just to make sure that the blood comes out, but you have to squeeze through. You don't want any blood in there. And then you pack it with salt. Every groove, every crevice is packed with salt. Everywhere packed. And then you get a big bin and you pour salt on the bottom. You put the leg in there and you pour more salt on the top. It is covered in salt. And then you're going to let it sit for so many days per pound. Okay. So it can sit in that salt. There, there's a, a, a a scale, I mean, a, a chart that you can look at and figure that out. And you let it sit there for up to weeks, okay? Three to four weeks. And then when you're done, you take it out, you wash all the salt off of it and dry it, dry it thoroughly. And then you get this mixture of lard 
and herbs if you want it to be herbed, okay? And you, again, you pack it all around with this lard and herbs, and then you hang it in a dry cellar, cold, dry cellar. I don't know the, the exact temperature for up to a year, if not longer than a year. So it should take about a year to cure. And the salt basically cooks, preserves the prosciutto, okay? I'll tell you, these really do make lovely, lovely, uh, either a side dish or an appetizer. Wait till I'm done. Wait till I plate this, these for you. They're gorgeous. Oh my gosh, now is the time I'm really happy I'm not wearing my hat because it's getting hot in my kitchen. You know what they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out, but I can handle it. I can handle the heat, it's all good. Might have to turn a fan on, but I'll be good. Okay, look how pretty these are already. Look how pretty. When you get some clean hands, Tina, make sure you stir your cranberries. Really? Why does that always happen when I've got, I'm in the middle of something, I have to stir my cranberries, okay. I took them off the heat so I can go back to them in a little bit because they, they do need to be stirred. Thank you for the reminder, my dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We didn't think my dear Caitlin was gonna make it today. She, where are you, Caitlin? In very, very high winds, somewhere with very high winds. In the Rocky Mountains, we got 80 plus mile wind happening this morning. Wow, wow, wow. We, we are blessed to have you as usual. I am blessed to have you. I am. And Tina, Mary would like to know, were those stray beans raw or were they cooked? Oh, great question, Mary. Um, they're raw. They're raw. And yeah, we're going to cook them right now and they're going to get crispy. They're not going to get smushy mushy. Okay. I don't like, I don't want to, you don't want these smushy mushy because I'm telling you, they're going to be an appetizer. You're going to be able to pick it up and, and bite into it. Okay. That's enough. That's enough of these. Let me take these gloves off and I'll clean that up later. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me do something real quick. Let me put this in the refrigerator. That's not the refrigerator, it's my problem. All right, I must really have brain, lime brain today. Okay, we're gonna check that crust. I just want you to see these, by the way. You see how I'm heating them through and they're starting to, to, to break apart, okay? That's what we want. We want them to be smushy, mushy, okay? keep cooking. I'm going to lower the heat though, lower the heat. And Caitlin, give me a four minute timer on the cranberries, please. And now we're going to check the crust. Okay. It needs a, mm, it needs two more minutes, but I wanted to show it to you. Okay. I'm always a little weary about my convection oven, but you see how it's brown around the sides, but in the middle, not yet. It needs just two more minutes. But now that I've opened the door, and let all the heat out. I'm gonna give it three more minutes. So we're gonna do three more minutes. Okay, good. That'll be beautiful. Now, what's next on this? What's next on this? I am not gonna add more salt. Not because it, the, the, the prosciutto was already cured with salt. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. If you don't already have a pepper grinder, please do yourself the biggest gift not biggest, so it's a good culinary gift for yourself as some freshly black ground black pepper, okay? It, the, the flavor profile is really awesome, especially for this particular recipe, you'll love it. Now on the top, I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil and this is gonna help get it nice and crispy, okay? Nice and crispy, put a little bit more over there. Okay, just a little bit of olive oil, maybe a quarter teaspoon for all of them, maybe an eighth. Um, and now we're gonna put it in that hot oven. It's almost at 425, it's at 400 right now. And we're gonna do 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes, Caitlin, please, 10 minute timer as of now, okay? And hey, if they're done, they're done. If, not, if they're not, then we give it another two minutes. But wait. Just wait on those. They're going to be absolutely gorgeous and delicious. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Okay, what is next? We've got the crust in the oven. We've got the cranberries still cooking. We have the green bean bundles in the oven. What are we going to do next? We're going to make, not the filling yet. We're not going to do the filling yet. We're going to start with the butternut squash casserole. Butternut squash casserole. I'm going to tell you what I did. 
because I had to do a lot of this prep in advance, but I will show you how to cut a butternut squash up. Let's just do it now. Let's just do it now. Hold on a second. Let me get my pan. Okay. I always bake with stoneware because it bakes very evenly. You don't have to stir too much, I should say. You don't have to stir too much. I already roasted on this this morning. I'm gonna get some of that stuff off. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. Now, I've already roasted this, so we didn't have to wait for this. I've already roasted it. I have it right there. It roasted a little, almost too much, but that's all right. It's gonna be beautiful. Okay. Who knows what this is? Who knows what this little guy is? Who knows what he is or she is? Yeah, they pop. That's right. I'm sorry, are the string beans wrong? Okay, got that. Yeah, so who knows what this is? Anybody know what it is? Anybody, anybody? It's called a honey nut squash. It is super duper duper sweet. For this particular squash, all you have to do is poke holes in it and bake it for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. This is a butternut squash. And this here, who knows what this is? It's shaped like those things that those squirrels love to eat. An acorn squash, an acorn squash. The acorn squash, you can eat the skin. You can just slice it real thin and lay it on the baking sheet, a little salt, pepper, olive oil, and bake it about 375 for about 15 minutes. No, actually 30 minutes. I don't know what I was thinking there. 30 minutes and they're wonderful. They're like chips. They kind of like chips. Okay, now it's done. <gasps> oh boy, I did something bad. That's okay, I can fix that. Um, here's, you see how the top started to get a little bit of brown? I got my pot holder into the crust, but it's okay. We're gonna put filling on top and it's not gonna be a problem. I want this to cool before I put any filling in it. So I'm going to put this, where am I gonna put this? Hold on a second. I don't like it on my granite countertop. So I'm gonna put it on some wood and I'm gonna let it sit. Look how pretty my rosemary tree is with my bow that I made. That pretty. Check your okay. cranberries as well. Cranberries, here we go. They're popping, they're smushy mush. Three more minutes, Caitlin, please. Three more minutes. All right. Who wants to learn how to cut a butternut squash? Who wants to learn how to cut a butternut squash? Squash. Put cut in the chat if you want to learn how to cut open a butternut squash. Put cut in the chat. All right, good. So the very first thing we want to do, the skin of the butternut squash is not edible. It doesn't taste good. Where, like I said, the acorn squash, you could eat the skin, no problem. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel it. And this is my favorite peeler. It's a big fat handle and it fits wonderfully in my hand. Okay. And don't worry about those pieces of skin going everywhere. You can collect them later. One Thanksgiving, I decided to make a big vat of butternut squash soup. I had to recruit my husband to help me cut all of these butternut squash. But now that I know exactly how to cut a butternut squash up and how to peel it easy, it's really not that difficult. It's not that difficult. And I don't have to deal with my husband complaining in the kitchen as he's peeling and chopping butternut squash with me. It's really easy. You see how I'm holding my thumb in as I'm holding the butternut squash? Because if you hold it like so, your thumb's going to get in the way. Okay, so get all that peel off. I did wash this ahead of time because if, hey, if there were any, anything on it, um, I didn't want it to get inside by chance, okay? And if there's a little bit of skin left, it's not gonna hurt, but this particular skin, it's on the bitter side, so you don't want this in your life, okay? Now, I'm gonna get all these scraps and I'm gonna give them back to Mother Earth. I'm gonna give hey, them, Tina, oh boy. Yes. Is there a name for that particular type of peeler? Um, let me look and see if there's a name on it. I think this might be OXO. But actually a name for this peeler, what to call it? Horizontal versus vertical, I don't know. You'll see it in the store. Just look up vegetable peel. It is OXO, this is an OXO brand. It is OXO, but I don't know what you would call this. Just look up vegetable peeler and I'm sure you'll, you'll find it. You'll find it on the wall. 
I have the other one that goes this way, but when I do this, I keep hitting my knuckles when I do the butternut squash. So I found this particular one works for me and my hands, okay? This one works for me and my hands. I'm gonna check those cranberries one more time real quick. I feel so silly with my little jingle bells jingling every time I walk. It's adorable. Um, they're done, this is done. This is done, I turned the heat off. You see how all my cranberries popped? And, and some of them haven't really popped really. So they, they have popped, but you can smash them down if you wanted to, if you wanted to make them more smashed, but it's nice to have some of them are, that are still a little bit on the round side. You're not gonna put this on the cake until it's completely cooled. And if you're going to freeze your cake, you do not put this on before you freeze it. Freeze this separately in another container, in a glass container, and just thaw it out the night before and serve it, put it on the cheesecake right before you're going to serve it. I'm a big proponent of making dishes and freezing them. This way, a lot of stuff is out of the way. Okay, a lot of the stuff is out of the way and finished and there we go. We have our topping. I'll put that on a dish for you in a moment. Okay, as a matter of fact, let me go get one so I can show it to you. Hold on a second and think about that until just now. Yeah, let's look at it so you can actually see it versus in the pan. I can hear my green beans sizzling. Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty that topping is. And it's delicious. It's a little on the tart side, but if you want it sweeter, put a little bit more monk food in there. I love it tart because, I don't know, the cheesecake just doesn't deserve to be super duper sweet. I don't think so, but that's my opinion. And again, this is really good for your heart and to help get rid of toxins in your body. Okay, let's put that aside. We're gonna put it over here. Okay, next, we're not done cutting up our butternut squash. Let's talk about knives. This is a chef knife. And <clears throat> this knife is another kind of chef knife, but it's got these little grooves in it. Do you see those little grooves? I don't know if you can see them. Let me see if I tilt it sideways. Can you see grooves? If you can see the grooves, put groove in the chat. Put groove in the chat. I like to use this groove knife better than my chef's knife, okay? Because with butternut squash, it's very sticky. And this will help release the vegetable a little easier than my flat chef knife, okay? Make sense? Okay. Now, this is round. And if you know anything about what me, if you've seen my show before, make round things flat. Very important to make round things flat. But I'm gonna chop off the top and I have a good grip on this. So it's okay that it's round and I'm gonna chop off the bottom little stem that I wasn't able to get off with my peeler, okay? So let's just get rid of that stem. And now again, it's round. We need to make this flat. So let's cut it in half first. With something that's a little on the denser side, remember I said I always had to recruit my husband to do this. I figured out how to do it safely. So first of all, I want you to score your vegetable. It's really hard to get through, right? Score it so it's here. And now get your other hand, put it on top. And I'm on my tippy toes. Get some weight on top of it and then press straight down. And you'll get something that's on the heavy, on the, the, the harder side, you'll get it cut through. Now, the other thing, did you notice how I'm holding my knife? Index finger on one side, thumb on the other side, three fingers on the handle. If most people cut like so, and that is very easy for that knife to slip, I am adamant about teaching knife skills because I want you to save your beautiful fingers and not chop them, okay? So hold, when you hold like so, and the knife swerves a little bit, it's not going to swerve out of your hand, okay? Next, this is still on the round side, but it's got a flat side now that I can cut it in half. So now I'm going to, once again, score it, get on my tippy toes and press straight down, okay? Now I've got some flat surfaces. Let's do the same thing with this one. If this was, big, right now I'm gonna cut it just in half. If it was bigger, then I would cut it in thirds, okay? So here we go. We're just gonna, again, flat, see how I curled? I didn't curl my fingers. They're not all over the place, they're together, okay? And cut straight down. Now, 
If you didn't want to do it this way, okay, you could have always done it like so, scored it, scored it like I did before, and then pressed down this way. Okay, you got that so far? Got it? Okay. Check your green beans as well. Woo! Check some green beans. Let's check some green beans. I want two more minutes, please, Caitlin. Two more minutes, please. Two more minutes. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna get a spoon and dig out the seeds. You can toast these seeds if you'd like. You can toast them or you have to get it off, off the membrane. They're wonderful, but there's, there's a lot of work. You have to get the seeds uh, out of all of that membrane um, or just give them back to mother earth. And maybe next year I'll have some volunteers of some butternut squash. Okay, here we go in my garden. This is a grapefruit spoon that you can do this with any spoon. It'll just might be a little bit more difficult. My grapefruit spoon has got little ridges on the end and that helps to get that, get those seeds out, okay? Once again, it's round. I'm gonna make them flat and I'm gonna roast the butternut squash before making this casserole because the roasting of this, but you could steam it, it'll be fine. You could steam it. Just don't even take the skin off, slice it in half, take the seeds out, poke holes in it, skin side down on the roasting pan in the oven, 375 for 30, 40 minutes, and then scoop the flesh out with a spoon. You could do it that way, but what you're not going to get is that umame, that, that wonderful flavor that you get from roasting vegetables, okay? That wonderful flavor you get from roasting vegetables. So that's why we are going to roast these vegetables, which of course I've already pre-roasted, but I want to show you the process. I'm going to show you the process here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut these into thirds and get your fingers out of the way. When you are holding a knife, I want you to be 100% present with your food, your fingers, and your knife. You notice when I'm cutting, I'm not looking at you. I'm looking down because I want to be present with my food, my fingers and my knife, okay? When I'm cutting, chopping this way, my fingers are curled in. Also, if you notice, I'm not chopping straight down. You see that? I'm using the whole knife. Use the whole knife. With this recipe, you also need carrots. Why? Because carrots are a lot more firm than butternut squash, and it's very complementary in this particular recipe, okay? Very complementary in this recipe. Now, these are too fat, these carrots, and the carrots cook uh, a little, they're a little, again, denser, so I want smaller pieces with the carrots, smaller pieces with the carrots, so that they cook about Check the same green time. Beans well. Are they ready already? Okay, yeah. I can hear them. I'm going to finish this carrot. I'm going to finish one more carrot, and then I'll go check them. I am tempting fate. I'm tempting fate right now, but that's okay. Score it, press on the top. Okay, score it, press on the top. Okay, all right, carrots are all in there. Let's go check our green beans. Green beans are done. I'm gonna let them sit there. I'm not gonna touch them because I'm, I don't wanna get burned, okay? So they're out of the oven. This has to cook at 400, so we're gonna bake. 400. Okay, this is how easy it is. You can get a bowl and put your salt and your olive oil into a bowl, mix it up and then put it in here. But why? It's so much easier. And remember, I'm lazy. I don't want to have to go get a bowl and wash an extra wash an extra bowl. You are not using pepper in this particular recipe. It's on this the sweeter side this recipe, okay? We're doing pumpkin pie spice. About 2 tablespoons of olive oil. That's it, in the oven it goes. Okay, Google 40 minute timer. There we go. When it comes out, you're going to get something that looks like this. Now, I cook these 10 minutes too long. You see a little bit of brown stuff going on or a little bit of black and stuff. I tasted them, they're not burned, okay? They're just on the darker side. And they're wonderful. I would not ruin this dish. I would have baked a whole nother batch if these were terribly ruined. And when, again, when you roast, you're going to get that 
mm, that roasted flavor that you just can't get when you steam, okay? Now you're gonna get your food processor. Let me lock it in place here. Good, food processor is ready. And we're going to put carrots and roasted butternut squash. Exactly what I just did over there. Dogs will get it. And to this, we're going to add some coconut milk, a little bit of pumpkin pie spice. And if you're like my sister, she won't eat it if it has pumpkin pie spice. She no longer likes cloves. She keeps changing throughout the years, who knows? And so I'm gonna use cinnamon as opposed to pumpkin pie spice for this one, okay? Gonna get some coconut milk from a can. Do not buy light coconut milk. They add something to it that is not good for your body. I recommend that you pour your coconut milk in a bowl first because sometimes the there's fat and there's the liquid that are separated and I don't want them separated. Um, I Yeah, you want them all mixed together, but this particular can did not have any clumps of lumps of, uh, of fat. So that's perfect. I'm gonna get a third a cup of coconut milk. What all you need is a third of a cup. I always get confused. Oh, it was a half a cup. Okay, so I need to do a little bit more. Okay. If you're not exact on your measurements, it's okay. It's okay. We're gonna do a quarter cup of some maple syrup. You could use monk fruit in this one, but for this recipe, I always use the maple syrup. And that is an eighth of a cup. So we'll do, there we go, two of those. You could use Yacon syrup, and that's very low in sugar. It's got a third of the sugar of maple syrup or regular or honey. I could have used that. What else am I missing in here? Coconut milk, maples, oh, the cinnamon or the pumpkin pie spice, okay? Pumpkin pie spice or some cinnamon. Okay, we're gonna do about a teaspoon of cinnamon. There we go. So it's a sweet dish, but it's not super duper sweet. You have to be careful because people who are addicted to sugar, they really want things that are uber sweet. And that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. It's, not, it's a sign that they're on their way to, to being pre-diabetic if they're not already. Many people are pre-diabetics and they don't even know it. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on and I'll be right back. Oops, maybe it would help if I plugged it in. While this is mixing, which will only take a few more minutes and I don't mind if it's chunky, I'm gonna make the topping, okay? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Did you have oh, did the oven door open when you're preheating the oven? No, no. Hmm. Okay, there's a couple of questions in there and I'll get to those in a couple of seconds. Okay, we got toasted pecans, toasted sunflower seeds, and coconut flakes, coconut flakes. Okay, I like this recipe on the chunky side. Okay, so you're gonna see this a little on the chunky side. If you wanna puree it a little bit more, feel free to puree it a little bit more. Let me get my thing. All right, so somebody asked me what kind of knives I use, right? Is that the question? What kind of knives I use? And I use a variety of knives. Yeah, the knife that you saw me using, believe it or not, was a set that I bought years ago from Tupperware. Very, very, very good knives. I've had them for a very long time. This particular one came from Tupperware. And the other knife, the chef's knife was Santa Claus brought me an early Christmas gift. And that is a Japanese knife from, called Shun, S-H-U-N. It's a Japanese knife called Shun. You do not need to have expert knives in order to have 
good knives in the kitchen. You don't, okay? I, the knife that I used for the longest time and I still use, it just needs to get sharpened more often, is this stainless steel knife that believe it or not, I got from um, BJ's. I love this knife. I love it. It just needs to get sharpened often. It's stainless steel. As a matter of fact, I need to take this out and bring it to my dad to have him sharpen it. That one, I don't even know the name brand. I just bought it from BJ's, but it's all beautiful stainless steel. You don't want to buy knives where they, the, you want the entire knife to be integrated into the blade, okay? You want it to go all the way through what's called the tang, okay? All the way through, because if not, it'll break easy. Okay, now this, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it in the freezer for, uh, and I'm just gonna put tin foil on top of it, put it in the freezer. And the night before I'm going to serve it because I have relatives coming to town over the holidays, I'm just gonna defrost it. And then the day of, I'll put it in the oven for at 350, 30, 40 minutes until it's heated through because it's cooked already, right? It's cooked already. We don't need to cook it. We just need to eat it. Okay, so now we're gonna put the topping on the top. That's it. There we have it. Now in this topping, did you, did, I, I think you heard, heard me, it was toasted pecans, crunched, uh, toasted sesame seeds and uh, shredded coconut, not shredded coconut, um, coconut flakes. You want them flakes. You want big pieces for this, not small pieces. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna wrap this up, put it in the freezer and with a label on it, of course, so that I remember what it is. And um, there we have it, our butternut squash casserole with pecan crunch, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yum. Okay, we have to make a cheesecake, don't we? We have to make a cheesecake and I need to show you the green beans. I will show you the green beans. Let me get organized here. Okay, if you guys having fun, put fun in the chat. If you are having a good time with me, if you're having a good time with me, put fun in the chat. If you are having a good time, um, okay. Better time to pick fresh green beans. I want to use them in a particular type of green beans. Okay. Um, emotional cooking. If you haven't already, you ought to read Like Water. Oh, I saw that movie, Like Water for Chocolate. I love that movie. Now I'm going to have to watch it again. Green beans. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not understanding your question about green beans. So you're going to have to help clarify that question for me of the green beans. Um, I get them. Don't wash them until you're about ready to, to use them. That's one thing. And I, I got French green beans. I like those better. And yeah, again, I'm not clear on your question. Yeah, I love Like Water for Chocolate. Great, great, great movie. Great movie. Okay, here we go. We've got cream cheese. Do not chintz on your cream cheese. Do not get Mufatel. You get full fat cream cheese. This is meant as a treat, this cake. And yeah, you're to use full fat cream cheese. Again, I'm going to use my monk fruit, three fourths cup of monk fruit. And this time I am going to use and sift, okay? Remember I'm making a half of a recipe, half of a recipe, okay? I'm gonna sift through my monk fruit so I don't get any lumps in this. And here we go, three fourths of a cup. There we have it. Good. Sounds like you guys are having a good time. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Wait until this comes out. Now, tips on cooking a cheesecake. First of all, I'm going to mix the, the sugar with the cream cheese, but I'm not going to over blend it. You don't want to over blend it. You don't want to whip in too much air because it could cause the cake to crack. But if it cracks, so what? You're putting the, the cranberry stuff on top of it anyway, right? Okay. Got all the lumps out. Done. Now I'm going to mix these two. Once they're mixed, then I'm going to add in the eggs, the vanilla, and the sour cream. Okay, ready? Here we go. Make sure you take your cream cheese out of the refrigerator two hours ahead of time, maybe three hours. You want it nice and soft, and you don't want to have to put it in the microwave or anything. You don't want to have to cook it. Don't do that. Just take it out ahead of time because you want it nice and soft. Again, just to incorporate. Get a little muscle in the kitchen, right? Get a little muscle in the kitchen here. And every once in a while, you're just gonna press it down with your spatula. I don't even use large spatulas anymore. I like these small ones. They work really well. 
Okay, that is incorporated. And next we're gonna put in room temperature eggs. Yes, take your eggs out, room temperature. I'm gonna do one egg at a time. And if you don't already know my trick with eggs, crack an egg in a separate container. Make sure it's not a bad egg. Make sure you don't have shell in there and incorporate it in one egg at a time. Because if I put an egg in here, it was a bad egg, I would have lost all my ingredients. Okay, that's one egg. Here's egg number two. Good, no shell. It's not a bad egg. You know it's a bad egg because it smells and it's super runny. Super on the runny side. We're almost done. I promise I'm gonna get all of this done for you. All of it. Because it's that simple. Cooking is not difficult. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Oops, I didn't mean to make that noise. We're gonna put sour cream. When I make this cheesecake, my family is just in love with it. They're like, oh, this is so good because it is. And remember, you don't need a lot. I'm going to put this in the oven for 50 minutes. I think the temperature is 350. A little bit of Madagascar bourbon, vanilla, organic. It's wonderful. And then you're going to leave it in the oven, a jar with the spoon in the door and leave it there for a good hour. Do not touch it because you want it to set. You don't want it to crack. You want it to set. Okay. Once you take it out of the oven two hours later, right? You turn the oven, turn the gas off, put it back in the oven. Good. It's mixed through. That's it. Don't mix any more. Don't, don't over mix it. Don't overthink it. Just do that. Okay. We're going to get our crust. Then you're going to let it cool off on the countertop for several hours. And then you can freeze it. I wrap it up in, in cellophane and get a cardboard, a round cardboard thing that you can get from, from the store or just put it on something that is solid and store it in the freezer if you want. If you want to eat it right away, then, then put the topping on it and eat it right away, okay? Um, otherwise, I mean, I've been cooking, making these the last several weeks and I've been freezing them and taking them out the night before and then serving them with the defrosted cranberry topping that everyone just loves this whole cake. Now, what we're gonna do is that in there. Okay. Get any air bubbles out. It will help to keep it from cracking. Get any air bubbles out. Okay. Okay, this is ready for the oven. I'm gonna put it in the oven. 350 for 50 minutes, okay? Open the oven door, literally just get a wooden spoon and slip that wooden spoon right there and leave it in the oven. Don't touch it, don't take it out, okay? Don't take it out. I promised you that I would plate these green beans. I promised you I would plate these green beans. And we're going to plate them. Here we go. Get yourself a nice plate. And put them on your plate. We're gonna get some balsamic glaze, glaze balsamic. And you're gonna make these look super pretty. Watch what I do. There we go. Just kind of go, there we go. And there we have it, our prosciutto wrapped green beans. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't they beautiful? And then we have our butternut squash, carrot, pecan crunch casserole. And of course our cheesecake that still needs to bake with our cranberry frost, our cranberry, um, cranberry topping. I couldn't say the word. I'm like, gosh, I can't find words today. I would love to know. I want to say thank you for being here. I would love to know what have you found most valuable about our time together today? Was there one thing or two things that you're like, yes, I'm going to do that. Yes, I'm going to remember that. Thank you for that. What is it? 
you made this all look easy. Good. I'm so glad. I'm, I'm and that's I want you to think that it's easy because it is. It's not that difficult. Everything looks yummy. Good. Yeah. What have you found most valuable about our time together today? Caitlin is going to put in the chat a link to my YouTube channel. I would love, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll see this cooking show and and little tidbits of other cooking shows that I do. And it's a lot, a lot of fun. So Caitlin's putting that that link in there. Also, she's going to put a link for my joyful gut reboot guide. It is a free gift for you. And if you dig deep into my joyful gut reboot guide, you might find a free gift for you, which is a free session, a weight loss session, coaching session with me. It's a $350 value, but you got to open up that book to find it. Um, yeah, so good. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the top to the bottom to the middle of my heart. It has been a joy. It has been a pleasure. And I wish you, your family, you, all of your loved ones, everyone in your life, the most joyous, fun-filled, healthy holiday season ever. And until next time, until next time, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and namaste. Bye for now, everyone. Have a great day. Happy